Hello everyone and welcome to the Speculative Wildlife Research Center, where we reimagine creatures and monsters from all realms of fiction through the lens of speculative biology. Today we will be looking at the Kappa, folkloric river spirits from Japan. These beings appear as small, somewhat reptilian, somewhat monkeyish creatures that inhabit rivers and ponds and are famous for drowning people in order to devour them. So much so, that they have become symbols of the dangers of carelessly approaching rivers. This creature has been quite a popular suggestion in our comment section. So here goes a thank you to everyone who asked to see this creature. And to our patrons, who chose this video in our exclusive research sponsor Discord. If you also wish to support the channel, please consider liking and subscribing, donating on Ko-fi, or joining our Patreon. Links available in the video's description. And, as always, I will be giving some design and biology notes at the end. So please stay if that is something that interests you. Now, without further ado, let's get started. Many times over the course of history, parents have had to warn their children not to approach something or other in order to protect them from harm, often claiming there are hidden monsters that will attack them. One can only imagine the surprise of children upon ignoring these warnings and finding themselves face to face with a kappa. These creatures, scientifically named Cornocephalus viridis, are close relatives to the Asian species of soft-shelled turtles, but have adapted into a much more mobile lifestyle. Kappa inhabit ponds and slow-flowing rivers all over Japan, with some closely related species living in continental Asia, and are well adapted to this aquatic environment. When a kappa is resting, its limbs might seem barely longer than those of a regular turtle. But this is because, when lying down, the kappa will tuck its arms and legs beneath its body, and it is only when it starts moving that the long, muscular limbs of this animal are revealed. These limbs are adapted for terrestrial locomotion in the very mountainous environment of Japan. Since these turtles cannot survive in salt water, their only chance of finding new territories once Japan became isolated from the continent was braving the land in search of new bodies of water. While Kappa can walk on land whenever it is necessary, their movements are still the awkward shufflings of a semi-aquatic creature. The true extent of their agility is only seen when they swim using their strong limbs and webbed feet to cross the water. Still, while they can swim as gracefully as any other soft-shelled turtle, they still prefer to lie lazily on the bottom of their watery dwellings, with their long claws helping them easily hold on to the wet rocks. In fact, Kappa can spend so long immobile in the bottom of rivers that dense manes of algae can grow on their bodies especially in older individuals. Despite these amazing anatomical features, there is still one that puzzled the people of Japan when they first discovered this creature. The one feature that lends them their scientific name. Females of the species are characterized by a small depression located beneath their head, surrounded by neck muscles, scaly outgrowths, and the frontmost part of their shell. After mating season, the female will lay her eggs and carefully place them inside this depression, where they will stay safe from harm. While most turtles will place their eggs in nests, this strategy does not work for kappa, as they have much fewer eggs that could easily be wiped out by a single predator in a matter of minutes. By storing their eggs on the back of their head, kappa are capable of keeping them safe and out of the reach of predators, as few creatures would dare face an adult kappa for such a small reward. Plus, 
by occasionally dipping below the water, the kappa can keep its eggs from drying, without them being fully submerged. Kappa caring for their eggs will avoid most risky situations and hard to catch prey in order to keep their eggs safe. Should a kappa move too much, her nest may eventually tip over, forcing the mother to stop everything she is doing, even in the middle of eating, in order to ensure her eggs are still safe. Once the hatchlings are born, it won't be long before they become fully independent and leave their mother's side. Young kappa usually stay together for protection, hunting and resting together until reaching maturity. This process, however, will take over 10 years, during which the young kappa will feed and frolic during the warmer months and hibernate during winter, depending on their numbers for safety. When they finally become sexually mature, they will live by themselves and search territories to claim as their own. Should a kappa want a territory that already belongs to another individual, the two will compete by climbing a rock, wrestling and pushing each other. Whichever kappa proves to be stronger or more skilled by throwing the other from the rock will keep the territory for itself. Like many species of turtle, kappa are omnivores and usually prefer to lazily feed on aquatic vegetation and vegetables available near their habitat, such as cucumbers and gourds. In order to stop these animals from raiding their crops, farmers have had to come up with many different strategies to protect their livelihood. Ever since metalwork became commonplace, Metal fences have been the best way to keep kappa at bay, but farmers that can't afford this choose to fence their crops with ginger, which is highly toxic to many species of turtle, including the kappa, thus effectively driving them away. However, vegetables are not the only thing this creature eats. The kappa will also prey on a variety of animals from fish and frogs that it pursues at great speeds, to land animals as big as dogs or fawns. While it may seem strange that a land animal can fall prey to this creature, few could claim to be able to distinguish a kappa laying in wait. When viewed from the water's edge, a kappa's scaly skin will seem smooth, and its pale green coloration, in combination with its tucked posture, will make it look as nothing more than a group of rocks on the bottom of the river. Once an animal approaches the water to drink or fish, the kappa will attack with great ferocity, ambushing its prey and using its notable weight to drag it down into the water, where the kappa will drown it and rip it apart using its sharp claws and beak. They will usually begin their feast by attacking their nearest orifice, the easiest way to enter the body, and will usually search first for the liver, which is packed with nutrients. Despite the relatively small size, kappa can be deceptively strong and heavy, and will easily pull into the water an inattentive human being. But there are also reports of larger groups of kappa overcoming their territoriality to bring down prey as big as horses and cows which they share between them, the biggest kappa usually keeping the liver for itself. Since even adults can fall prey to this creature, great efforts have been made to warn children of the danger of kappa, educating them to better take care of themselves and avoid approaching the areas where these creatures live. Yet, despite their predatory nature, Kappa and humans have been able to coexist peacefully. In order to avoid attacks by these creatures, many farmers have taken to regularly giving a few of their vegetables to nearby kappa in order to sate their hunger. These well-fed kappa, in turn, have learned not to attack humans. Kappa are even capable of recognizing the specific humans that feed them and will actively seek them 
displaying not only an interesting food, but marked play behavior when around these humans. While these creatures, given their notable strength and claws, would make for poor pets, there are tales of kappa that were trained to aid in fishing, guiding fish towards the nets of their favored humans. And that's it for a speculative biology look into the kappa. This one, as other creatures on our channel, had a seemingly clear inspiration, as kappas are known to have shells, scaly skin, and have even been called by the name of soft-shelled turtles in the past. But it still had such a fascinating anatomy to make it a really fun challenge. One thing that proved hard to adapt was the fact that kappas are intelligent, moody creatures with their own pastimes and a propensity towards becoming angry if they are not treated with the respect they deserve, at least according to themselves. I did my best to adapt this into the behavior of our speculative biology version, including the fact that they enjoy sumo wrestling and the fact they can become friendly and even helpful to humans in certain conditions a type of behavior that has been reported in many types of reptiles, including turtles. Another thing that was hard to adapt was the Sara, the dish Kappa have on their head, a small depression where they store water. It is said if a Kappa is tricked into spilling this water, it will be left very weakened and be forced to escape. This can be achieved, for example, by bowing to a kappa and having it bow back, because they are very polite. In the end, I gave them a natural nest on the back of their head, formed from structures that the turtle already has and giving it a good selective reason to develop it, the protection of its brood. This gave me a very good way to go about it, as this nest being emptied ends up giving the same image of a kappa tipping its dish and quickly abandoning everything in desperation in order to refill it. Since kappas were supposed to refill it with water from the river they inhabit, having them quickly snatch their eggs from the water would easily give the same impression. All in all, I am very happy with the end result, and I hope you guys enjoyed how this creature turned out. And remember, if there's any type of creature you'd like me to give the speculative biology treatment in the show, please sound off in the comments below. Thank you all for watching, and see you next time on the Speculative Wildlife Research Center.